Welcome back to Real Repairs for Real Customers. I wanted to start with just a brief update uh, concerning last video on the leather tables. We discussed the translucent finish on there and uh, there were many questions that were sent in by email and in the comments section, which revealed to me I forgot to mention a few things. So let's just take a moment here and do that. Uh, first of all, if we look at our very first table, we can see that uh, there is some checking in the finish of that. And that checking reveals that it originally had a lacquer coating on it. The same thing with the second table. We see the checking in that revealing the lacquer coating. So my choice in putting the lacquer coating on was the first application is reduced. I use what's called a universal retarder and that retarder slows down the drying of the first lacquer clear coat. And the advantage of that is that it's, it enables that uh, coat to soften the underlying lacquer. We call that a burn-in coat. So that gets us our adhesion that we need, and then we can put a full coat of lacquer on top of that. The advantage of doing this is that we maintain the authenticity of the coating. So when we're done, if an appraiser were to come to the estate and look at the uh, tables there and uh, assess a value to them, they might say, well, this is authentic, this is original. And so that would be of some value to the homeowner in that situation. So uh, we also uh, discuss this with the homeowner in particular uh, before we do the job. We tell them what we see, we tell them how we're going to fix it, and that it will come back to them in such and such a shape, uh, and it would be authentic. And so that goes a long way to building up the confidence uh, in your customer. So that's it. Uh, let's move on to our repair for today. And this happens to be a couch, and uh, the arm is in very bad shape, so we're going to have to make a plan. Let's go. So these people dropped off the couch. They know that this is not an upholstery shop. Nonetheless, if the upholstery doesn't require a high skill level, I can pull it off, and I'm sure that you can too. And we do a little inspection here to begin with to see how this thing comes apart. I'm prying on the wood. I don't know how it's fixed on here. You can get a sense of the tension in a piece as you're prying, and if it's giving a little bit, maybe you can pry some more. And that way you feel pretty confident that you're not going to be tearing up something. Well, there it goes. So, look at there. It was held on from the inside. There were nails coming from the inside of the arm. So that's our first clue as to how that goes back on. This staple puller is very handy for this type of work. It's extremely sharp, so you'll have to be careful with it. But you can see it's angled and it gives you the leverage that you need. We'll have to get the legs off of there in order to have access to the fabric. And it's not a bad idea to have them off anyway to make it easier to move this couch around on the table. Checking to see if there's something else holding it. I guess not. Now it'll be easier to remove this cambric fabric, which is used as a dust cover. It really needs new fabric here, but uh, that's not part of the job, so no worries. As 
So pulling the staples out here is going to allow us to save this end piece. So this is the first piece to come off and the last piece to go on. I don't know what this guy is taking, but it sure makes him work fast. So at this point you can see the cardboard tack strip that's used. The vinyl is folded over the tack strip and that's what gives you that really nice clean finished edge. So now we're getting around to the back side where we have the metal tack strip. We have to pry that loose in order to get the back side of the arm. If you recall, we discussed how to use the metal tack strip in a previous video where we replaced the vinyl in the back of a couch. For now, we just want enough access to get the back of this arm loose. And there we go. Now the thing is I have to reuse this piece of fabric so I am marking where it lies against the framework. Only then I'm going to pull off that cardboard tack strip. So on the arm itself I am going to pull the staples out again as opposed to cutting and just trimming it off because I want to use the original vinyl here as a template. There's always a million staples it seems like. Now if you went down to staples to buy these staples they wouldn't have them. They don't have furniture staples. They have furniture, and they have staples, but they don't have furniture staples. So here you can see where the bottom of that fabric for the arm is stapled at the very end of the couch underneath. And there's an extra piece of fabric attached to it just to give you uh, a hand grip to pull that down. Here's where I thought I pushed record and I didn't and then when I pushed record again thinking I was turning it off I took a picture of myself texting on the phone instead of taking the rest of the staples out from the arm but you can see that's all we did take the rest of the arm staples out and that piece comes off so I found a close fabric in color and in texture from my original supplier, but uh, it's discontinued, wouldn't you know? And that uh, is one reason why sometimes furniture can be very frustrating. The fabric has been long discontinued, and then in order to find something that works, you have to work with somebody you didn't work with before. The fabric is half the quality and four times the price. Frustrating. 
but I have found something that fits the bill. And here I am attaching that piece of fabric that's on the very bottom of the arm, where it staples on through the end of the couch underneath. This piece required a little more than a yard, so you have to buy two yards. I used the original piece for tracing, and so this is the exact dimensions. Now I've saved the original end cap for the back of that arm and I made chalk marks on the end cap and on the original fabric when I took it apart and transferred those marks to my new fabric. And then I cut these notches, as you can see, lining up these notches. So that way this end cap is going to go on my new fabric exactly as it had come off the old fabric. So you find in this kind of a job, there's very little time spent actually on the sewing machine. The majority of your time that you figure is being spent on the teardown and the rebuild. And in this case, there were uh, about two days um, waiting for the material to come in. Now you've seen me use this sewing machine before and my choice for this particular machine has to do with being mobile. So it's situated already in like a suitcase. So you can carry it to the job site. You can carry it into your work van. It's designed to be carried onto a boat. So for the mobile technician, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, certainly uh, the upholstery shop or the fixed location is not going to be concerned about having this model but for the mobile tech everything is a little bit out of the ordinary and if we had proper thread tension we should have a pretty good seam here and you can see how close the color of the new fabric is to the original end cap and texture too So that was pretty easy and we're already assembling. So we're just going to take the time to make sure that we get it fit right before we go ahead and staple anything. One thing I noticed is that this new fabric wants to grab onto the foam and it looks like it's uh, hanging up in the wrong place. It's really not, it's not too bad. It just grips it and uh, puts a wrinkle in it, which is easy to smooth out. But uh, in hindsight, I think it might be good to throw a piece of plastic, really thin plastic. You see that uh, in upholstery sometimes. Uh, to cover the foam with a thin plastic so that the new material slides over top and it doesn't grip it uh, like this fabric is doing. Not a big deal, but uh, just uh, something maybe to think of for next time. It's sort of sticking, you know, like uh, static, you know, when the, in the winter time when your pants stick to your legs. <laughs>
it's always reassuring when you first get it on there and it fits. So you didn't cut it short. So here I'm just double checking everything, making sure we're at the full limit of the wood here by pulling that down. Now it's finally time to get some staples in. These staples have a 3 8 leg on them, and I think the crown is also 3 8 inch, but that's a very standard staple for use in most upholstery where you want to really attach something heavy duty. Use a quarter inch leg staple on the new console covers because there's very little plastic there, so you can't go very deep with your staples. This is the part where it would be nice to have two people, one to tell you it's pretty smooth on the other side while you're stapling on this side. But I'll just put a couple staples in and keep checking. Here toward the back of the arm on the inside there's a cross piece along the back of the couch that that uh, vinyl has to be sort of trimmed around. There's no clear-cut way to do it other than just to do a little trimming. So this can go back together. Now we just need to pull this snug, not too tight. All these staples get hidden, of course, underneath our end cap. Here around the front of the couch, you just have to find a way to fold the edge of the vinyl under and just make a nice clean wrap around here if you can. You get the opportunity to look at the other end of the couch and to copy what they're doing there too. Now here you can see where the original folds were because it left an impression here in the foam. And so what I'm doing is marking a line on the wood just so that I remember and I can see exactly where to put these folds because I want to duplicate this end just as it came apart. I feel confident that they had a certain 
way that they did this when they made the couch. So if I follow their system, then this end of the couch should match the other end as well. I think this is quite a clever way to gather the excess material and have it look decorative at the same time. Brilliant. Check twice, staple once. So this isn't as difficult as it first appeared. As long as you pay attention how it comes apart, then you know exactly how it goes back together. I don't want any excess material here because, of course, the wood has to lay sort of flat on the face. Now, because we had to pry off the metal tack strip, it's all bent every which way. So I'm just going to totally remove it, uh, straighten it out, straighten out each of the nails on it, and uh, we'll get a better fit going back together. Before we attach the back though, we have to put on our end piece of vinyl, which we marked earlier. Of course, we're only going to attach the top part of this end piece. And you see I've marked a straight edge uh, line on that vinyl because everywhere we're, that we ripped staples, it's got a raggedy edge, and I don't want any of that raggedy edge showing. And so, this way, I can put my new cardboard tack strip right on that line. Everything folding over the strip, then, is guaranteed to be good vinyl. My tack strip is heavier duty than what you ever see on furniture it's uh, more rigid and if that's true with yours you just need to make sure you have plenty of air pressure to drive those staples home then uh, it's out of frame but when i got to the other end i could just snip that cardboard tack strip to the right size Now on the wrap around, there are some lines already in that vinyl to give me a clue as to how it goes on. So 
So I want to make an effort to pull it snug, but don't pull it too tight. There's just that happy medium there, it seems, when you're doing upholstery. And so now with the fabric wrapped around the front, we can go ahead and test fit our piece of wood trim. I have pounded all the nails back in, so there's nothing in the way. Now here's the original staple, and here are the brads that I happen to have in stock. They're exactly the same length is the staple so fortunately for me I already have what I need so as we mentioned the nails went through from inside the arm so I'm positioning it here and I'm driving the brads in from inside, which is why we couldn't finish upholstering that end piece yet. And it must be that the couch and I have become buds because here we are, arm in arm. So now that the trim is on, we can go ahead and finish upholstering everything else. And when you accidentally shoot off a staple like that, you're glad that you're wearing your safety glasses. All safety equipment is courtesy of my sister-in-law, Linda. She really looks out for me. So we can put the metal tack strip back in the very same holes in the vinyl. Now that we've straightened it up a bit. Up top everything is the same so I can actually use some pre-existing holes in the wood. Coming on down further though we're going to have to make sure we've pulled it over to the end of the couch direction enough to catch that wood and we'll make some new holes over there.
Easy does it at first and then we'll pound them all home in just a bit. And now finally the last bit of that end piece. And the cambric. And well, folks, that's all there is to that. Not a high level of difficulty, not a high skill level. We wanted to make sure that uh, it looks original. That arm right there better look a lot like the arm on the other end. And with a little attention to detail, it does. So this repair is not out of reach for the average technician. It didn't require much in the way of extra tools either. And if I can do it, then you certainly can do it. Thanks for watching.